Hello, everyone. Welcome to Prophecy in Christ Above All. My name is Tony. Let's get into it, okay? Today, I want to go over the next step or the next thing in the chronological order to the tribulation, okay? Um, you know, the Antichrist uh, died. Supposedly, he came back to life, per se. And um, Israel's facing two beasts now in uh, Revelation chapter 13, you know, in that area as well, too. But I want to talk to you about, you know, like I said before, to the, in the previous um, video, uh, God is protecting his Jewish people, okay? Uh, he has not forgotten them. Um, and uh, these things that are in the scripture, in the, in the book of Revelation and so on and so, so forth, show us that God is protecting Israel. I mean, Israel's called the woman who had the child, that kind of thing, you know, different symbols like that. But um, today I want to go over a part that tells you that God wants the Jewish people to flee once they see something happening, okay? Because the temple is going to be rebuilt, and I've said this to people many times, and I've actually had Jewish scholars tell me this as well, that the temple could be built in two weeks. It could be a temporary temple. And then they can have, you know, the, uh, the sacrifices and so on and so forth. But as they build the bigger, you know, the real, you know, the temple, per se, all right? Uh, the real building, per se. It's going to take them much longer. So, because they have everything they need. They even have the anointing oil for the Messiah to come back. See, the Jews want to anoint the Messiah. And they actually have the anointing oil that they have found <clears throat> underneath, and in a tunnel, underneath a huge mosque in Jerusalem, okay? Uh, they have the Ark of the Covenant, but uh, it's not revealed that they have it. Uh, I've done extensive study on that, and they do have it, the actual one. Uh, the menorah has been re reproduced, and so on and so forth. So they have everything they need right now. Um, but let me get into this. Because I want to show you that God is going to allow the remnant, the believing Christians, okay, the believing Jew, Hebrew Christians, and these are going to be tribulation saints, okay, to go from one place to another to protect themselves and those with them, okay, uh, during the time, during this, this, this situation, okay. So I want to go into um, Matthew, Matthew 24. Uh, verses 16 to 20, 16 to 20, okay? And I might just go ahead and read 15 to 20. Let's go, let's do that. That's better. Um, <clears throat> and it's, it's, it's stated like this. Jesus is actually saying these words by the power of the Holy Spirit, putting them here, okay? It says here, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, okay, which was spoken of, through Daniel the prophet, okay, this is not an Antiochus Epiphanes, which happened before. It's talking about Daniel the prophet. This is going to happen in the future, okay? Uh, so, there has to be a temple that's going to be built, right, as I mentioned. Okay, uh, the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, which is the temple, the, you know, the holy of holies, per se, okay? Uh, and in parentheses, you know, in parentheses, it says here, let the reader understand. In other words, you need to understand this, okay? Um, that this is part of, of a, an action that Christ wants these people to take, okay? He wants them to almost react to it, you know? Once they see it, they need to just move on it quickly, okay? And he goes on and says here, then let those who are in uh, Judah, or Judea, excuse me, flee to the mountains. Okay, so when, if, they're in, if these people are in Judea, they need to flee to the mountains. Okay. Um, these are the faithful Jewish, this is the faithful Jewish remnant. They need to flee to a place, okay, when they call the mountains, it's old time Petra, okay. Uh, in modern day and age, it's Jordan, okay? 
um, and they will be um, protected by God as well uh, throughout to the end of the tribulation as well too. Okay, now let's see that. Okay, um, let him. This is what Jesus says, and when he commands this, people need to exactly do what he says. And there's a lot of Christians out there who, well, I don't know about that, and I don't know about this, and I don't know about that, and add this to it, and take this away from it, and maybe we should put this in it. And, and I can't, I, I cannot see, for the, for the, even for the love of God, how people can think that they can do such a thing. It's written down. The Holy Spirit has preserved the Scripture, and people intermingle what they feel and what they want, or they. Sometimes people I feel like they, they want to feel like they're important, so they say things that are not even there. You know? It's one thing if you if you if you if you're, if you're preaching an application or what have you. But if you want to interject something that's not really even there, that's kind of scary, you know? Not that I'm perfect either, but you know, this is just when Christ says something, he means it exactly this way. That's what it means. And we got one book to master. All New Testament, okay? All the New Testament. And he goes on here and says, um, here he comes. And let him who is on the housetop, okay, not go down. In other words, don't even think of going down. If you're on top of the housetop where it's kind of like a, I guess what he's saying there is, you know, if you're on the housetop, uh, you know, don't even go down to the street. See if you could just keep walking the house tops, you know, because you're going to, you're going to run into traffic and people and everything else and things, and they're going to see you and they're going to slow you down. I don't want that. I want you to do this right away. Okay. But he also goes on here and says, okay, uh, let him who is on the house top not go down to get the things out of, out that are in his house. Okay, so some people may have to go down, but don't go in and, and, and take the things out of your house, okay? We all know what happened to Lot's wife when she turned around. Boom, turned into a pillar of salt. And this is an application to that too. So we have to open our eyes to these kind of things. When Christ says, you go this way, you go this way. You don't go this way and this way. You don't let a person guide you the wrong way. You go according to the word of God. There's a lot of people out there I was listening to a, a minister, pastor, the other day, on YouTube, and uh, he's got the same mentality I have. And I'm going to tell you point blank, okay? Somebody asked him uh, something like, what do you think the problem, of, problem with America is? And he said, I think it was the problems with America or the problem with the church today. He said, it's the pastor's. You got false teachers. You got people aren't teaching anything. You got you know they, they're just what's going on. It's it's like there's nothing going. People are not learning. That's the problem. And the, a lot of people are lazy minded, not wanting to learn, and they push it away. They push this away. They push that away, or they think it's okay to joke about the Bible even too. You know, how do, 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 we are not supposed to even dare to do such a thing. Okay. To joke about the Bible. I don't even want to see an address like a John 3.16 joked about from the Bible. And you know, the John 3.16 is really man-made, <laughs> but that is not even a good thing to do. I've seen people put up another name and, you know, 3.16 or another name and they put other numbers in there, you know, like, uh, um, I don't know, 10, you know, 7.14 or whatever, you know, whatever they do. This is not a, a playbook here. This is not a, a game here. This is the Word of God, the Bible, right here. See? Right here is the Word of God. That's it. Period. So what do I have to offer you? The Word of God. No frills. I don't have all the bells and lights and everything gorgeous and pretty. I got the Word of God, and that's it. I don't have no charts. I have very few charts. You know why? Because Christ... I don't think Christ really wants charts. I got charts to look at for myself, but for me to teach you with a chart is not always the best thing, okay? Because you have to be 
working in your mind to understand what's going on, okay? Our minds need to be actively moving forward, not, oh, here it is on a chart. You have to almost picture it. And this is what's going on with young kids in Sunday schools today. Everything's on a chart, and uh, it's so easily, nobody's moved. Things are becoming lazier, okay? And that's not right. And we need to do what God wants us to do. So here he is saying here, Jesus Christ is saying, when this happens, the abomination and desolation happens, don't even go downstairs. Don't even go down. Don't even get your stuff. Forget your coat. I don't care if you're freezing to death. Go. You know, that kind of thing. Okay? I don't. Okay, and then it also goes on here and says here, let him who is in the field not turn back to get his cloak. Okay? So there you are back with Lot's wife. She turned around and boom, she got hit. Pillar of salt she became. Okay, but woe to those who are with child, okay, and those who nurse babes in those days, okay, so it's going to be extra difficult for those women, very difficult, and he's saying, maybe he's also saying here, as you see the end times coming closer and closer, try not to have as many kids, try not to have more kids, that kind of thing, don't have any kids, some people don't even want to have kids now. Because of the, they, they, see, they, they see that we're in the end times. Okay? And I'm not saying don't have any kids. Remember that. I think all kids are a blessing. I really do. Okay, and it goes on. It says here, But pray that your flight may not be in the winter. Okay? Okay. Oh, okay. Or on a Sabbath. Okay? Now, the Sabbath day, things are going to slow down. The Sabbath day, people are going to be around. This is the remnant of the Jewish people. These are the believers, okay? Things are going to get slowed down, okay? You're not going to be able to walk for that far, okay? And you're going to have to, but he's saying here, you're going to have to break this probably most likely, you know, in a sense, because I'm telling you to do this, but you know your conscience is going to bother you in doing this, but I'm telling you to do it. So, you know, if it's, if it's a Sabbath day, for instance, he's not telling them to break the Sabbath. He's telling them that they're going to have a problem with it and they need to move forward on the Sabbath. Okay? You know, a lot of Jews don't realize this, <clears throat> but it's, it's been known, too, that, you know, they don't, they're not supposed to eat pork. A lot of the Jewish people don't eat pork. Okay? Uh, I've talked to Orthodox Jews, you know, rabbis and so on and so forth. But during the time of war, when they were in another nation and there was nothing else to eat but pork, pig, they could eat it because they were at war. So this is the idea here, okay? You can break ceremonial things when, I'm not talking about laws, but you could break the ceremonial side of it when, you're, when there's a war going on. And this is a war. This is a spiritual war, of course. Okay, now some Jews are not going to agree with me. Okay, and they're going to. I hope you don't hate me for it because I don't want you to be. I don't, I don't want you to hate me for it because that is really the truth. I've studied this too. Okay, I, I don't get up here and just jabber. I've actually studied these things. Okay, and I got so many books that I don't even know where the. <laughs> I got the books, but I mean, it's like I got to dig into them. You know, to show you. But I remember these things. Okay, so there it is. That's one part. Flee, run. Okay. And they're going to be divinely taken, taken, you know, they're going to be, they're going to be protected, per se, all right? But let me go to Revelation, uh, chapter 12, okay, verses 15 to 17, okay? And I'll read that to you, too. And it says here, um, and the serpent poured out, poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman. And this is the people at Petra. Now, these people are in Petra. They're in Jordan, in modern-day Jordan, right? And there's going to be, I guess, a flood of some sort, okay? And the devil's going to be behind it, which means he can move weather, okay? All right, so he, but, you know, God is the one who controls the weather. He can move the weather, but God controls the weather. Remember that. Okay, <clears throat> so 
Um, uh, it goes here and it says here, and the serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman so <clears throat> that he might cause her to be swept away with a flood. So that's what he wants to do. The enemy wants to flood them out, okay, and kill them off. And he says the wrong, this is the remnant. These are the saved believers, okay, Jewish believers. <clears throat> and the earth helped the woman, okay, and <clears throat> the earth opened its mouth and drank up the water. That sounds like an earthquake of some sort, possibly, unless there's something else that I don't know about or we don't know about. But that sounds like the earth opens up. Kind of goes back to, uh, you know, the time of Noah, where people think, oh, it rained, it rained, 40 days, 40 nights, it caused a flood. It didn't cause a flood of 40 days and 40 nights of rain. I'm sorry. It says that the floodgates of the earth opened up and everything collapsed. And, the, you know, there was, there was water underneath. You know, <clears throat> that kind of struck me harder when I read that because I was born on Long Island, okay? And I grew up on Long Island. And the funny thing was this, and I guarantee you, if you would dig down one or two feet on Long Island, you would hit sand. You'd have sand almost immediately. And water. Two or three, four, two or three feet, you'd, you'd hit water. And you would be not, you'd be far away from the water. Really, no joke. And a lot of people, I understand, I was talking to a guy one time who worked in a, in a, a cemetery. And there were times they couldn't, you know, they dug a hole and they would not be able to get that body down to six feet. They had to do certain things to get that body down, you know, the, you know, the, the, the coffin, per se. So, and a lot of, you know, modern science says it, at one time uh, Long Island was a glacier and it picked up stones and it went on a, and all this other stuff. And, it, you know, that's how it became so sandy, you know. A lot of history on Long Island, you know. Um, you know, George Washington was uh, on Long Island, too doing his wars and stuff. There was a great spy on Long Island who his last name is Woodall. I actually grew up with his great, great grandson. Uh, and, you know, we talked about different things, you know. So, but anyhow, let's get off of that right now. Let's get back to this. But it goes to show you that the earth can open up. Okay, that can open up right there in, in probably in Petra in Jordan. Okay, and it can swallow up that, that flood or that water. Okay. And um, so it goes on, um, drank up the river, which the dragon poured out of his mouth, and the dragon was enraged. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, too bad, dragon. <laughs> um, with the woman. And who's the woman? Israel. So he became enraged, okay? So what does he do? When he can't get through to something or someone, right, he runs around, okay, and he tries to destroy Israel another way, okay? And he went off to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. See? That's how you know if a, even a person can act like that many times. Okay? They can, uh, you know, they do that. Obviously, that's to me, that's satanic energy. But um, they try to get people involved behind the scenes, and they try to move, move a person in, and they trap them. It's not right. That's satanic energy. Okay? But... Uh, it's right here in the scripture. If you really read it, you'll learn the tactics of the enemy. And you'll actually know how to keep your self protected properly, you know? So in life too. But the, there it is. And it is God who protects them, protects his people all through this. 
These are the remnant Jews. And, uh, you know, they're believers in Christ. And um, the enemy wants to destroy them. It doesn't talk about the other, the other non-believing Jews. It just talks about those who didn't take the mark and so on and so forth. Okay? So that's the idea. Christ is going to protect us if we listen to him. And how do I say it to you? I think within Christianity, you know, I see this in Protestantism, if I could say this. You know, it's almost like you have to give up all control and do, you know, and, and let the Lord handle it. No. And what happens is if you know what the scripture teaches, okay, you don't have to sit there and let everything fall apart. You take them, you move on it quickly. And, oh, that's impatience. That's not impatience. That's moving on the Lord quickly. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Okay? I mean, Christ, Christ was that way himself. You know, the man with the withered hand? Huh? Boom! He healed the hand and it was on the Sabbath. He went against the grain. Sometimes you need to go against the grain the right way. Okay? And other, others may not understand you, but you know, you need to do it. Because you know what? You're not living for them. You're living for Christ. Okay? All right. Lord bless you. Have a great week. I'll come up with another one. And, um, you know, you might really like the next one coming out too. Okay? Bye-bye now.